peeps, welcome back to my channel and to a new video on Vapor. The next few episodes we are going to cover Leaf, a templating language in a Swift syntax that we can use alongside Vapor. Without further ado, let's have a look what we will end up having. Now you can see that we will have dynamic HTML rendered in our browser. What does dynamic mean? It means that we are able to pass in data into our Leaf template and then render HTML based on that. So we will have a list of characters with names, images, and we will learn how to configure leaf. We will learn how to, um, where to define and position and structure leaf files. We will learn how to access variables inside of a leaf file and loop over data as well. And also we will learn how to abstract certain components of leaf into reusable components and also learn how to write our own leaf tag. So much to learn, a few episodes to come. So let's start right into it. Can you say start right into it? I think so. So I'm on a desktop, I will create a new project and call it the Legend of Zelda. Now without supplying any further arguments, our project is based on an API template without a configuration for leaf. You could have also supplied a command um, argument. I think it's template equals, whoops, template equals web. And that would uh, clone the project uh, with a leaf configuration already. So it's easier for future projects. If you know it's going to um, include leaf, go for that. But I want to show you how to configure it yourself so you at least know how to do it. And then later on, you can just skip that. Uh, right. So let's go into our project Legend of Zelda and open package.swift uh, in order to define our new dependency, which is leaf. So we will copy that line and replace this here with leaf because I know from the top of my head that this is the right git URL to the leaf repository. We can check that. Whoops, that was a mistake on my side. Okay, we can check that by putting it into the browser and uh, look it up. And it's basically that URL over here. And the tags here are, right, the tags over there. We are starting from, so we will probably get, we will definitely get 3.0.2 pulled in. And then if we are defining dependencies like that, we will have to put, uh, add them to our target like that as well. All right, let's save that file here, close it. I want to delete the git uh, directory as well because uh, otherwise Xcode will show me blue lines on the side that I changed code. I, th I think that's a little bit distracting, distracting for the video, but uh, just for, for me, I'm removing git and we can use vapor update dash y to pull in our, our all our dependencies and supply dash y to open up xcode right away because otherwise uh, the vapor toolbox will ask you whether you want to open xcode or not and obviously that's what we want all right once the dependencies are pulled in an xcode project is created and xcode is opened we can see that under dependencies leaf 3.0.2 is indeed uh, pulled in so we can just close everything here and go and delete everything we don't need. I want to clean up the project to its bare minimum uh, and delete controllers and delete models. Always move to trash. If, you've, if, you've, if you have done both, we can go to roots. Uh, we can close the right side and delete everything that's in here so we have nothing in here left, just like that. Go into configure and also delete everything that's in here just to reduce all the noise that we don't need to really have a clean focus on the things that we need. Once you've done that, you can just run the project to make sure everything compiles. Uh, so you don't have uh, like uh, accidentally remove a curly bracket like I did in one of my episodes. All right, let's position it to the left. Cool, 8080 is running and we can check that we get a response. Although it's an error, we do get a response from our server. The first thing we want to do is fix that for me, <laughs> format here. Uh, we want to do is configure leaf and that's super simple. It's two lines of code. So in our configure.swift file, we are going to import leaf. And then we are doing two things. First is we are registering the leaf provider by passing in the leaf provider instance to that register function. The servers gets passed into here and we also get passed into a config 
that we are using now. You could also assign leave provider to a variable and then pass the instance to register, but uh, you can save yourself a line of code and just pass it in right away. And we are going to use config as well to uh, tell our project that we prefer leave renderer as our view renderer, right? Because we are about to create leave files like dot leave files and they need to be rendered and the project would have to would need to know what kind of files and how to render them. I think default is the plain text renderer, but again, we want to prefer the leave renderer as our view renderer. And that's it. If we will, if we have done that, now we are able to go to roots, define a new root. I mean, we have we would have been able to do to define a new root anyway, but uh, we can do now special things inside here. So we have our root at the index, right? And let's return a view. How do you do that? Now you can just return request dot view and view this function creates a new view renderer and that view renderer is indeed the leaf renderer the leaf view renderer because we've configured it like that so it will take that one and now we have the instance and can call render and then supply the path with the file name where our leaf file is located to um yeah to basically return that as a response to the request to the index um, call. So let's return a file that's called welcome. And at this point, you will have to know that uh, this one throws. You would have to know that the leaf renderer or the renderer by default looks into a directory on the root that is called resources slash views. It will look, it will look for files.leaf files inside there right now, but we don't have that directory. So let's go and create it. So at our root, let's create resources, right? Just a new group and then another group inside of here and call it views. I like to position that underneath product products, not inside of it, but underneath it on the same level, just to have it at the bottom of the project. All right, inside here, let's create a file that's called welcome. So new file, I'm not sure how to create a file that is not a certain file with a certain index. So let's call it welcome and rename the extension to leave. Now this name here has to be the same as you are supplying here. You can also create new groups inside here and then for example, a user group and then say user slash welcome. So that means inside that directory, inside views is a file called welcome if you have structured your project like that. So you have actually kind of a freedom to make a clean structure inside your views. All right, we have welcome.leave and now we can write inside here HTML, plain HTML and also use leave tags. We will get to that in a second. So let's start writing HTML. I will not go into very much details regarding HTML because first of all, we are using a very, very basic HTML. And second of all, I mean, that's a paper leaf Swift uh, video and, and not a HTML basic tutorial. But if you are curious about basics on HTML, W3 schools is a super good resource where you can for free learn HTML and get to know the basics. In order to get syntax highlighting uh, for our leaf files, let's just go to editor syntax coloring and say HTML. And there we go. So we are defining our head as well. The title will be the legend of Zelda. Let's put it like that and close the head. And then we have our body, body like that. And here, let's say, what do we say? Uh, hey, listen, just like that. Cool. Now let's see whether we can run our project and it, whether it will actually serve that file. All right, we are running the project, we are refreshing and we have, hey, listen, not only hey, listen here, but the Legend of Zelda up here, that's the title that we have just set. That's awesome. You've configured the project, you have served a leaf file. What about passing data into our leaf file and 
parsing or actually rendering our HTML dynamically based on the data that we have passed into. Let's do that. It's super simple as well. So we go, we go, we go back to roots and here we can define a new struct. Struct and let's call it character. And that character will have a property called name, which is of type string. I want to actually pass in a character named link to the view. So let's create a variable that is an instance of character and yeah, pass in the name link to that instance. Now this instance, right? This instance that we assigned to this variable, we can just pass it into here alongside the name of the template so that the instance is exposed to leaf. Before you do that, you will have to conform at least to encodable in order to, and you will have to write encodable, right? Um, in order to be able to pass in uh, your instances of variables. Let's just see whether we can run it anyway. Nope. So Xcode complains because it cannot really um, infer or actually come conclude what the result type is, which is a future of view and don't get and don't get scared at all about future and the generic um, declaration of view for the future. That's something you don't have to know about yet. We will cover it definitely in a future episode extensively to like once and for all understand futures. But even if you want to build up your website right now completely using Swift and leave, you don't really have to know about futures at all. You just like um, pass in data, return your view, and that's it, you're good. Now we can run our project and nothing will happen because we haven't used that variable in our leave file yet. Now, how do we access variables in our leave file? If we go here, we can access um, variables with hashtag and then parentheses and then inside here the, uh, the name of a variable. Basically, uh, but it's not link at this point. It's a little bit um, not confusing, but you will have to think around the corner a little bit. At least it feels to me like that. Now we are passing the instance of link inside here. So what we get exposed is all the properties of that instance. So that is name. So we can access actually, because that it's the having the whole instance exposed in here and all the properties. So we can actually have access to name. It's the only property of that instance. And if we refresh now, we indeed can print link. And you've just uh, seen that I didn't rerun the project when changing something in a leaf template file. You don't have to rerun. When you change something inside the leaf file, you don't have to rerun the project. It will just work. Only if you change Swift code, you will have to obviously recompile. All right. Uh, but okay, back to this name thing here. It's not super convenient in terms of readability also for future developers that come across your leaf files and then think, well, what is this name? There is no context whatsoever. Let's change that by using a container struct. So we can actually use define another struct and let's say it's a welcome data struct conforming to encodable and welcome data by its name already can tell you a little bit uh, or can tell other developers, okay, this must be the wrapper container that is uh, passed into the welcome template, for example. And you can use another template, like later on, if you have different websites, for example, the user profile, uh, then you can have a, a struct that says um, user profile data. And it includes all the properties that you want to have exposed in this template. All right, so we want to have in our welcome leaf template, uh, the character exposed. So let's have character, which is of type character. And let's also um, have the title. So let's have title, which is of type string. And now we can go and say, uh, let's say welcome data is a new instance of welcome data. And then the character is link and the title is the legend of Zelda. Uh, Ocarina, no, 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 Twilight Princess, like that. And then we, we're passing that one inside here. So let's go here and say up here, let's access title and let's access character, which is of an instance character. And we know this one is having a property uh, called name. 
and we will have to rerun because we have just introduced a new struct, right? And then if we refresh the website, we see Twilight Princess and Hey Listen Link still works. That's it for this episode. If that episode was super helpful to you, hit the like button, hit subscribe to not miss out on future episodes on when we are learning how to loop over uh, data, how to actually create our own tag, how to structure leaf files, and, and even more if you propose even more topics you want me to cover regarding a leaf in the comment section. And also check out definitely the description box because I have my Patreon link there. You can support me doing YouTube full time. And also I have my social media links there. So you can just come on over on Instagram and chat with me. Also, you can always chat here in the comment section. So I hope you had fun and see you in the next one. Bye.